I'm going to show you how to add some security to your Zoom meetings. So I'm in my Zoom profile. I'm going to click on meetings. And this is where you can edit meetings that you have already created. You see, I want to click on this meeting here. I can check the settings. And if I want to edit that, this is where I could require a meeting password that I can then just copy and paste somewhere and share with users. If you click on enable waiting room, that means that you have to let participants into the meeting, even if the meeting has started. Clicking here is you only allow users that have the Zoom accounts to be able to get into your meetings. So that's a wonderful setting if you only wanted friends, seminary students to enter your, your meeting. The first time that a student tries to do this and they have not been, if they have not set up a Zoom account, then it will prompt them to set up the Zoom account and then they can enter the room. And then you just click on save to, for any of these settings to take place. I'm going to bring us to the Zoom app to show a way to do this as well. So again, if I have, these are some of my upcoming meetings. If I wanted to edit even a recurring meeting, I can do that here. So say I click here, click on edit, and then you'll see that there's an option where you can require that password if you wanted to. If you go down to advanced options, that's where you can toggle on and off the waiting room. I would not allow participants to join before the host. And this is where you can have that option for people to have to use their Zoom account in order to join your Zoom meeting. For those who have changed their pre-existing meetings to add a password, you may have noticed that something happens to the link or the URL of your Zoom meeting. So here's a meeting that I set up before adding a password. And then notice that after I add the password, the link changes. The important thing to notice is that if you look at the root of the URL, it is referring to the same meeting. So both links are active. The difference is that with the old URL, if you have folks who are using this old URL, when they log on, they're gonna be prompted to add the password manually. For those who have the new URL, then what's going to happen is that the permissions are already embedded into the URL. So they won't need to add the password. So if you're worried about the link changing, it's not really a big deal. This can also be done when you create a meeting. So if I go back to create a meeting, you can see that it has the same options. So require that password, uh, go to advanced options. Again, you can do those as well. And then on the Zoom website, uh, if you wanted to create a new meeting, again, you can have those options as well. So. This is where you can, again, require that password and then those meeting options where you can enable the waiting room as well as uh, have only authenticated users and your meetings. One thing I want to show you is how do you create the default settings so that all of your new meetings have the security options. So as you can see, I'm on the zoom.us website. I've logged into my account. Now on the left-hand side, notice I'm in settings. And then when I go to schedule meeting, if you scroll down, you'll see some options for passwords here. And so you can toggle these on if you choose to do so. The benefit of doing this is that for now on, for any new meeting you create, it will require the password. Now, one thing to notice here is that you can toggle this on. And what this will do is that it will embed the password into the URL. And so that folks won't need to manually type in the password in order to access your meeting. 
one thing to note about this is that if the breaches in security have to do with people sharing or sending the URLs to your meetings to those who should not have it, then this will defeat the purpose of having the password because they're, they are, they're basically sharing the password. And then on the rest of this page, you'll see some of the other security options that you can add to the rest of your meetings, like muting all upon entry, uh, controlling the chats, as well as screen sharing and file sharing. And so you should check these settings on the rest of this page to see what you would like to enable or disable for your future meetings.